I call to order the Gladstone City Council meeting for April 10th, 2018 at 6.30 p.m. Hello everyone, happy April. Today is uh, my normal, I have to tell you the holidays. Today is National Siblings Day, so hopefully everybody called your brothers and sisters. I did not, but I will do that when I leave here tonight. And it's also Golfer's Day for those people out there that, that golf. Yeah, I don't, I wish I did. So whichever resonates with you guys, celebrate. Um, tonight we have a fairly light aden agenda, so hopefully we can keep on track. Our consent agenda is approval of the March 13th and 27th regular agenda minutes, approval of the March bank balances, budget report for the period ending February 28th, 2018, approval of the February, no, March check register, or is it the February? It, actually, I was going to correct you. That was a typo. It is February. So everything you're approving tonight is February. It's February. Yeah. Okay. Legal costs on projects, department head monthly reports for March. Yes? Okay. Adopt the Parks and Recreation Board work plan, approval of memorial donation and gift program policy. Our regular agenda is Ordinance 1487 discussion, which is amending the GMC, Gladstone Municipal Code. Chapter 2.16, Court and Jury Trials. We were going to have an update from the school board representative, but their meetings have changed, so that's going to be canceled for this evening. We're going to have a report from Lauren and Natalie from the Library District Advisory Committee, which is called LDAC. And then we'll have an audit presentation and recommendation for fiscal year 2017 to 2018. So our... Um, so, could you please call the roll? Councillor Milch. Here. Councillor Neese. Present. Councillor Tracy. Present. Councillor Reisner. Here. Councillor McMahon. Here. Councillor Mercero. Here. Mayor Stemple. Here. Could everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Are there any agenda additions or corrections? Uh, Mayor, Council, I would like to pull item number nine from the agenda this evening in regards to amending Gladstone Municipal Code um, dealing with court and jury trials. I sent you an email, you may not have read it, however, the prosecutor would like to work more closely with the judge before making recommendations to that, and so we will bring that to you at uh, a future meeting. All right, well then we have a very light agenda tonight. So the next is business from the audience. We have quite a few, so we're going to definitely keep you guys to the three minutes. So when you hear, see that in the, then your three minutes is up. All right, Tammy. Frank Hernandez. <coughs> Frank Hernandez, uh, 585 Barbe Place. Uh, I am here to respond to the events of March 28th City Council meeting. The first response is for Councillor Anise. I would have made a written response to the paper on her opinion piece. However, since he, she used her opinion uh, position on the City Council to make a public statement, I will make my response public as well. During my 40 years of educational leadership, I have dealt with juveniles, most of them outstanding. However, a few would lie, cheat, bully, and steal. Every time you caught them, they would blame something or someone else, like you, Linda. When you caught them multiple times, they always claimed they were being picked on, again, like you, Linda, and making a written resignation to stop a recall movement only to retract it is the epitome of manipulation. As for bullying behavior, Councilor Neese, on the 28th, you used your position on City Council to publicly attack Bill Osborne. Using your own scripture, you were definitely not without sin. Don't cast any stones. Next, I want to applaud Councilor Reasoner for advocating for fiscal accountability. I will use Councilor Milch's home budget analogy. You have a home budget of $600 to include clothing, leisure, etc. With a week left in the month, you realize there's no money left in the food budget, so you transfer funds to an from another account. Now you have the option of two actions. You could resist scrutinizing every purchase, as Councilor Tracy suggested, uh, as uh, fiscal uh, as um, uh, 
Tracy suggested, recommend that micromanagement not the purpose of the City Council. However, then you risk repeating the fiscal transfer next month. Or as Councilor Reasoner suggested, you could speak to the person uh, responsible for the food budget and identify strategies or factors that caused it and compile strategies to better project the fiscal needs for the following month. This is not micromanagement, it's called fiscal responsibility. Any manager with effective fiscal experience would have implemented this process. I have 30 years of, management, of managing multi-million dollar budgets and will welcome the opportunity to recommend strategies in developing a systematic oversight process. Finally, I was appalled at the public accusation made by Councilor Mercero. Tom, you allowed your racial bias to influence your actions on my applica application. On the 28th, you allowed your personal and political bias to influence your actions towards Councilor Reasoner. You are fortunate that you kept me from being appointed to the council. For if I were, I would have stopped the meeting immediately. I would have immediately demanded you provide evidence of your false accusation toward Councillor Reasoner or demanded a public apology. Had you refused, I would have asked for a vote of censor so that you never again intentionally embarrassed the council or the city of Gladstone. Time's up. I find it impossible that the members have not taken a similar action. Thank you. Thank Don't you let the much. bullying experience re be repeated. Thank you. Next. Les Poole. Well, that was quite a dissertation. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Um, I want to thank you for all your service. I want you to know that I'm here with something positive, a couple of positive things, and uh, just a, a message that folks may not know about, and that is our gas prices are going up, and one of the things that happened is that there's a 10 cent per gallon gas tax now in statewide in Oregon. Five cents of that the state is keeping for state highways. Five cents of that is coming to the local jurisdictions. Uh, it's earmarked for road maintenance and when I look out here at some of the roads in this community while I'd love to have a new library and a water park and a whole bunch of other things we've got some serious infrastructure issues here so how we address that um, is in your hands and I just want to bring it to everyone's attention that the roads are not getting better and that uh, whatever money comes in we need to spread it as far as we can uh, my other issue is that I've recently submitted a uh, petition, uh, hopefully it will be approved for signature gathering soon and you'll be pleased to know it's not a recall. It's a petition for term limits and I thought long and hard about it before introducing it and when I first heard of term limits, you know, 20 years ago, I didn't think that much of it. Um, and it was passed here in Oregon statewide and then it was overturned by the legislature in a rather troubling process and since that time term limits has been instilled in a lot of communities and I think it would be good for Gladstone. So uh, I, I just want to again say that uh, anything we can do to make this a better place starts with good infrastructure, starts with good people and I know there's a lot of, of of commotion. I'll just use the word commotion in the community and some of it's pretty overblown. Uh, some of it's probably justified but you won't find me pontificating on next door Gladstone. I've got better things to do. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Greg Alexander. Greg Alexander, Gladstone. Well, in light of this new audit article that has come out in the paper, it only validates everyone who voted out Steve and Kim and got Eric out of here also. Believe me, after this mess, it'll be easier to get the next recall done, especially when you can't manage our money. You wanted the president title, Linda, but you also have to perform the job. You're the only counselor with access to the attorney bills and spending details that other counselors do not have. It is now obviously Obviously, there is no oversight into Gladstone taxpayers' money. 
even though Neil has offered many times to look out for us and double check these figures, he has been denied multiple times by the same group of counselors up there that refuse to hold you accountable for your incompetencies. Linda, you always play the victim, but with all the unfavorable documentation that has been discovered in the public arena, it's obvious you bring it on to yourself. Anyone who goes to GladstoneRecall.com can catch up on your pattern of unethical and untruthful behavior. You wanted to condemn Bill for his past when running against him for your benefit, but now him and Patrick are bullies for pointing out, which is all public record, your many unscrupulous deeds which you have been caught in, most of them intentional. So I ask, why should you be on this council? Seems hypocritical to me especially after breaking your oath of office. You say you're not stepping down because it will happen to other counselors, and yes, anyone with your checkered track record, absolutely it will. The people who have seen the website immediately ask, how can the other counselors let her stay on? So not only are you not helping anyone, you're painting a target on the counselors up there that are doing their jobs. People are saying, get her out now and get rid of the rest come election time. Simple you need to be able to manage our money. When you mess with the citizens' money, there's a big problem, especially those who resort to attacking the very citizens they're supposed to represent. I believe the community is losing faith in this council and has even asked if the county could just run our city. The people in Salem advising me have said to mention this communication constitutes and will serve as a public records acknowledgement. Thank you. Next, Bill Osborne. Bill Osborne, I live here in Gladstone. One of you has violated, violated the very laws this governing body has created or adopted. Uh, this isn't even over a state law violation, as was another offense that you chose to ignore. Councillor Milch, I believe in talking with you uh, I would think you would be in favor of investigating this issue for the spirit of transparency. Councillor Tracy, I've met with you a couple times. Uh, if what you said to me was truthful, I would expect you leading the charge in this. It's an opportunity to prove your spoken interest in transparency and accountability. <clears throat> Mayor Stemple and Councillor Reisner, you both expressed interest in investigating this issue in an email the city administrator sent to everybody. Point of clar clarification, what issue are we discussing? You've had two issues up here. The business time. license okay, that thank you. issue with Lyndon East. Thank you. Um, this is true to your campaign words of being accountable to the people of Gladstone. Thank you. Council McMahon, after your attempt to reappoint Steve Johnson <laughs> to the council where the people of Gladstone voted him out, and after your words of not caring what the people want, uh, over your desire to build a police station, even if it meant no new library. I assume we all know where you'll stand on accountability, but I hope you prove me wrong. Councillor Mercero, you tend to side with Councillor McMahon most, on most issues. I hope you will side with the people of Gladstone on this. And finally, Councillor Nice, this is your chance to be truthful and open to the people of Gladstone and take accountability for mistakes. I was called a bully publicly for pointing out numerous law violations and wanting to hold our leaders accountable. However, I was the one who received veiled threats on Meanwhile in Gladstone, a social networking uh, page on Facebook from Councillor Nisa's husband who says, Osborne, you haven't seen me or met me, but you will. You ask where it would stop or who would be next. The answer is, as long as there are those who disrespect the office and the people they represent, I will not be silent. You violated your oath of office, which clearly states you will support the constitutions of the U.S. and Oregon, as well as Gladstone City Charter and Municipal Codes. Violating your oath of office is a legitimate reason to be recalled from your position. I would ask that the council look into this issue over Councillor Nisa's business that she was running, unlicensed, for five years, according to her own words on her LinkedIn profile. I would also call your attention to section, section 17, Mayor's Functions at Council Meetings. <coughs> Since you all received an email from uh, City Administrator Betts regarding any interest in investigating this issue, which is a clear violation of our laws, only two of you responded, which I was told means the rest of you, five of you, are not interested. Ironically, the five that voted Linda in is Council President as well. Uh, anyway, in Section 17, one of the lines... Time's up. Gender or masculine says he shall Thank have the you, authority to preserve order. I have a clarification question. So we're going to go for process here. I have a clarification press question. I have a question. Sure. So um, 
Susan Osborne, I, I do believe in credibility, and I, uh, I appreciate your position on this. I want to say two things. One is silence is not complicity for me. I don't I'm not going to speak for any other counselor. Uh, silence in my case could be deliberation. <coughs> we have a lot to move forward. Second thing, talking about clear, uh, credibility, um, through a records request, you operated a seafood business in this very city. Did you have a business license at the time with a Gladstone business address as your primary address for the LLC filing with the state of Oregon? I was not operating the seafood business in the city. I was doing business in downtown Portland, the Portland State University Farmers Market. Okay. Well, just so you know, I have made public records requests and found that you did have an LLC registered in the city as a primary place of business, as a Gladstone address, with no Gladstone business license. I just, I'll just i leave it at that. Thank okay. You. I will Thank check you. that Thank and you. see if it's correct. But Thank you. All right. I would hope Thank the you. council will vote publicly so we can all see where you land on this issue. And I would ask credibility that. issue for Thanks, me, though. Bill. Thank you. All right, next. Janice. Hello. So I am just here for a follow-up. We've been coming since February regarding a shelter for our cat rescue. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know that we, um, we have people in the group we've got um, supplies, we've got resources. We also just recently, um, Willamette Valley Animal Hospital has volunteered to come in when we do get our building, shelter, to treat the cats a few hours a week. So we have that taken care of. And we um, are just, we've been told that you guys were going to check into that. So I'm just here for a follow up on that. All right. That's one thing I wanted to... Okay, we'll talk about, we'll bring that up later. Correct. Yes. Just, just to do a process check, what we have been establishing is taking public comments at the beginning of the meeting and then at the end of the meeting we'll sort through to see if we are able to provide readily answers instead of having to research and come back to yeah. the council meeting. So we'll bring that back at the end of the meeting and talk about the specific items that people brought up during business from the audience. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I should wait for the whole meeting then? Um, it's going to be a short meeting, hopefully, because okay. we don't have very much on it, so you shouldn't have to wait very long. Okay. But we will bring it up. I'll do that. Okay. And then the second thing I wanted to bring up, I didn't write it on that card, though. Is it okay if I bring it up? You have one minute and 28 seconds left. Okay, I'll be quick. So um, <coughs> few, uh, several of you know about my neighbors, and last night I went around and I uh, got signatures for them asking for a city official to do a nuisance eviction um, because there is drug activity going on, there are drug sales going on, there is constant fighting, physical fighting between the neighbors. Um, I gave the signed forms to Ms. Betts. Um, she called Chief Jolly at, into the office and he took them. So um, hopefully you guys could find that city official to do the nuisance eviction. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, next. I think we have one more. Patrick Mathis. Since I wasn't here to defend myself at the last council meeting, Linda, I think it is only fair I get to address you now. First, I would like to remind you that you took an oath to hold that seat you are in. You're, you promised to uphold the Constitution of the United States, yet you complain about me exercising my First Amendment right to redress my grievances with the government. You also had the OFRW send me a pretend cease and desist letter which tries to undermine my First Amendment rights to free speech and free association. You also took an oath to uphold the Constitution of the State of Oregon, yet you signed government voting documents with multiple birth dates and voted on ballots you weren't entitled to vote on. You were not innocent like you claim over and over. Just past the statute of limitations. You also violated, by your own admission, Oregon open meeting laws. You also took an oath 
to uphold Gladstone Municipal Codes. Yet, as the Council President and Business Liaison, you didn't pay your business license fees for one and possibly more years while holding your seat. You attacked me personally, a private citizen, along with Mr. Osborne from the dais. You have without question defamed my character, another unlawful act. You have no such right, and you should be ashamed to have done so, especially from your council seat. This is an abuse of your position. You claim that I am a bully for trying to hold you accountable. This is not only my right as a citizen, but it's my responsibility. You are the bully. You have gone around lying about me to all who would lend an ear. Through your words directly or those of your friends, I have been called a stalker, a creeper, malicious, nefarious, an angry constituent, an intimidator, a blackmailer, an extorter. Pretty heavy charges. I have it in writing, Linda. You claim I'm embarrassing you. All I have done is look into public records, ask questions, use newspaper articles, everything in the public domain, and put it all in one place for people to see. You embarrass yourself through your own actions. I just put daylight on them. All you do is play victim and try and cover your tracks. You did this to yourself. Your unethical behavior began long before you were on the council. You even brought up those issues from when he was a young man that he atoned for through the legal system long ago during your election, knowing full well that you've done just as bad. You even knew through Bill that I had no intention of going public with your information. You also know that it has not all been made public yet. You said you would resign, but lied about that, and I waited. Now the genie's out of the bottle. Then you lied to two fellow counselors so that you could get the time to slander me from your barely elected seat. You and the people supporting you in this council have made a mockery of our local government. You bring shame to your position. Time's up. Thank you very much. Do we have anything else? No other cards. No. All right. Do we have any correspondence? Uh, no, Mayor. Thank you. All right. So now we're going. Oh, excuse me. I'm going backwards. We're going to do the consent agenda. Any discussion on the consent agenda? Can I ask real quick, did you like the new approach that we've taken on how we've done the bank balances and the budget report? Was that memo pretty clear and understanding? Yeah. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thought it was great. Yeah. And can I ask a question? Does that same report appear in the packet for all seven council members? Yes. None of that information has been excluded from any one council member. Is That's that correct. correct. Okay. And it is also on the city website. All right. So the public can see it as well. That's correct. All right. I appreciate that it's in more detail than what we had last year. Uh, last year at this time we would see more or less overall spending departmental levels kind of grouped together but not at the uh, individual line item level. So correct. Uh, this is prefer preferable to me and I think uh, it will help in our discussion later this, this meeting. It will help us. Uh, in, in, more, in monitoring more closely uh, the level of departmental spending, which That's we correct. set to do. Yes. Yes. Any other discussion? I'd like to pull item seven. Okay. All right, which is the adoption of the Parks and Rec Board work plan. Well, Mayor, I'd like to uh, make a motion that we uh, approve consent agenda items one through six and item number eight. Second. Motion was made by Councillor McMahon, seconded by Councillor Tracy. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Item number seven. Item number seven. Uh, by the uh, Parks and uh, Recreation Board, uh, we had a, uh, a work session a while back with all the councillors and, the, and a number of the uh, members. and. Uh, uh, I didn't say much during that meeting because there was a lot being discussed and everything was being said, I believe. But uh, I want to say in my mind, I believe it's a, you did a super job and the uh, plan was a succinct plan for a lot of work to happen in the future. And uh, if you need some help, I'm sure you can call on the council uh, and at least me to help if you need any ideas. Thank you very much. Well, just so you guys know, I'm the liaison, and Councillor Milch went also, and they've adopted objectives.
to, that will kind of mirror what we're doing on our strategic plan, so that's going to be similar metrics. Super. So even yeah. better yet. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So, would someone like to make a motion on number seven? I'll make a motion. And number seven is accepted. Mm -hmm. I'll second it. Motion was made by Councillor Mercero and seconded by Councillor Nice. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Work plans accepted. All right, now we can move on to correspondence. Nothing? Nope, nothing, sorry. All right, so our regular agenda was going to be item number nine, which is the Ordinance 1487 discussion that's been pulled. The school board representative is not going to be here, so the only item is our Library District Advisory Committee report. <coughs> Good evening. I'm going to let Lauren do most of the talking because I got a really bad cold and I don't want to have a coughing attack. So, mm. <coughs> so I'm Lauren Gunderson, interim library director. Um, so, LDAC, the Library District Advisory Committee, has really been working on two main things for the past several meetings. Uh, we didn't have a meeting in March, so we last met in February. And uh, one of LDAC's main purposes is to review the annual progress that libraries submit and determine whether the library district funds are being spent well and helping libraries achieve those annual goals. So they're trying to put together a, a form um, that all libraries can, can report in the same way so, and they can be assessed in the same way. Um, so at our next meeting, which will be Monday, April 23rd, um, we will review the most recent draft of that form. Um, and it, it seems like the two sections that we continually seem to get hung up on are financial data and standards of service sections of those report because it's, it's difficult to find a way for all libraries to consistently report those forms of data. So the other big thing that LDAC's been working on is the formation of two task forces. So the first task force is a smaller, more technically oriented group. Um, they're focused on um, identifying any changes that may or may not need to happen to the library district master order or the library district master IGA um, to implement the settlement agreement um, and facilitate the construction of new facilities for Gladstone and Oak Lodge service areas. Um, the scope of this group is comparatively narrow and will be completed in a short time frame of a few months. So this group has already been formed and our first meeting will be um, Monday, April 30th. Who from Gladstone's on that committee? Uh, Jackie Betts, Natalie Smith, myself, okay. and Gladstone Legal Counsel. So it's a fairly large group? I mean, you fully represented so for Gladstone yeah. each of the other jurisdictions? Yes. So okay. I'm happy to read who all's on there. It's uh, Grover from Oak Lodge, legal counsel, which will be David Doofman. Kathleen Drain is a citizen representative from Sandy. Lauren, uh, County Administrator Krupp, uh, Clackamas County Council. Mitzi Olson, who's the Oak Lodge Library Manager. Paul Savas, Clackamas County Commissioner. Gary Schmidt, the Department of Public Government Affairs. Natalie Smith, and then Laura Zetner, who is with uh, their Business and Community Services Development. Okay, Very so comprehensive. Okay, so this is just our library district yes. only. Okay. Except for the one citizen from Sandy that is sitting in on this as well. Okay. And they asked her to, to join for her all of her years of experience, especially with, I believe, going all the way back to 2008, being a part of working up with the original. Right library district. Right, so we're just trying to figure out what our internal makeup is going to be, our agreement, or how this weaves into the full county library district. So currently what one of the tasks by the county is to assess whether or not they need to amend the library district master order. Okay. And we are going to be at the table with them to talk about if they do need to, what could the minimum amendments be that would allow us to continue moving forward with both projects. Okay. Yes. All right. And a lot Thank of the criteria that we're going to be going over or reviewing is going to be set by Clackamas County. We don't even have an agenda yet. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So we don't, we're at the table basically. It will be a three-month 
task force <coughs> because there are certain uh, thresholds that, that they have to meet in the settlement agreement. So small, uh, small task force, small timeline. Okay. And, and one more thing for clarification. There's been discussion of the formation of a group at some point in the future after the May election to uh, help determine the shape and the scope of, of uh, the work of the two proposed new libraries. This is not that group that you're describing. Even though the, the people in it are from similar boundaries in the library uh, service area, uh, this is not that group. This, is, this group has a completely different purpose to its existence. And Mitzi Olson has a timeline where um, they are going to get, you know, a large citizen engagement of people and citizens to give input as to what they want to see with their library moving forward. Okay. All right. Sorry for the interruption. No, no worries. <laughs> um, the, the second task force is going to be a much larger group, um, focusing on a much wider variety of issues faced by the district, including things like um, sufficiency and sustainability of library funding, permissible uses of library district funds, um, and evaluation of those library service standards. Um, so this group's focus will be much broader. Um, it will be drawn from a diverse group of library stakeholders, and their work, work will continue over a much longer time frame of 12 to 18 months. And that's district-wide? Yes, district-wide. Okay. Mm -hmm. So those are those are the big big picture things that LDEC has been working on. Did you have anything to add, Natalie? No, that's all we know at this time. And you guys meet monthly? Not always. Not always? Okay. Yeah, not always. Well, yeah, we didn't meet in March, but our next meeting is scheduled for April 23rd. Okay, thank you and for doing that. I strongly doing encourage anybody here, if you want to come and hear what's going on, please come. They're open meetings. Do you meet at the at the county where the Board of County Commissioners meets? Yeah, in room 119, I believe it is, usually. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a, it's a different building than the one that BCC usually meets okay. in, the Development Services this Building. building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. B-150 Beaver Creek, I think, is that. Mm -hmm. right. Room 119, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Any other questions? Nope. Awesome. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate you. Now right. we thank you for doing this. Yeah, this is a, an interesting time to be on LDAC, for sure. Um, business carried forward which is the 2016-2017 fiscal year audit update. Good evening, Mayor, Council. For over 30 years, Gladstone has not invested in its infrastructure or its employees. We have been understaffed, stressed, and tired of fixing problems we inherited. This organization took on too much too soon. It disheartens me to see our tenured employees frustrated with the morale in the organization and community. Three years ago, the city created an accounting manager position and hired someone with no financing or Oregon budget law experience in local government. However, the city tried to provide necessary training. That person is no longer employed with the organization. Neither is the city administrator who was the chief budget and fiscal officer of the city during fiscal year 2016-17. Recently, the city fulfilled its fiduciary responsibility by completing a comprehensive audit from Marina and Company for the fiscal year 2016-17. We had to hire Plan B to prepare journal entries and financial statements during the personnel transition. To date, we have paid $37,237 for those services. We also hired Kathy Brucker as a financial consultant to be the interim finance director. Kathy has been employed in local government for over 30 years. She served as the interim finance director for West Lynn, as the finance manager for Tualatin Hills Park and Recreation District, and prior to that, for full service municipalities in Washington and Arizona in similar financial management capacities. Kathy has a Bachelor's of Science in Business Administration and earned her Certified Public Finance Officer designation through the Government Op Finance Officers Association. 
the auditors presented the council a clean opinion. The city did not spend the funds illegally and the city was not victim of embezzlement or fraud. The audit did have a material weakness where controls were not in place to ensure accounts were reconciled at year end. Audit adjustments to the financial statements were found that, in their judgment, may have been only detected through their auditing procedures. The existence of the material adjustments indicated that the system of financial controls did not detect and prevent such errors. Management's response and corrective action plan to the auditor states the City of Gladstone will implement quarterly review and year-end closing procedures to ensure all necessary reconciliation of accounts by qualified personnel. We will accomplish this with proper, imp proper implementation of GASB statements as applicable to the City's annual financial statements. Staff also sent Council and the Audit Committee a 2016-17 budget explanation of overage sheet with a detailed memo to explain succinctly why the overages occurred. Management reviewed and answered 36 questions requested by Councilor Reisner dated March 27, 2018. I have those here. It took approximately 15 hours to research and respond, which would equate to about $2,000. We responded because we did not want to be accused of hiding anything. If a majority of the council directs staff to provide more detail and or copies of the contracts Councilor Reisner requests, then it will come at an additional cost. Vetting questions further is not a productive or valuable use of staff time. What is being asked is not money that may be recovered and the expenditures were agreed upon at the time of disbursement. All members of the Council and public have access to the financial reports and have an opportunity to raise questions 12 times a year. I trust the management team's spending authority and judgment on their purchases, especially with the recent fiber infrastructure investment that will allow staff to have access to real-time financial information instead of relying on antiquated accounting activity. This next audit is on me. As staff, we care about the Gladstone community. We are ready to move forward and focus on a promising future that includes a new police department, city hall, and library, all enhanced amenities the residents deserve. So what I'd like to do is to go ahead and hand out Councillor Reisner's questions with the answers so that Kathy can, can come up and we can kind of guide you through these a little bit. <coughs> you want to make sure I can read them without my glasses. Thank you. Thank you. An, an overarching um, answer because you will come across it <coughs> in here. As you review the questions, it's important to note that the vendor list that we provided the audit committee had a Tyler vendor list and a Springbrook vendor list. And so the Springbrook vendor list was carried over three months into the Tyler. So it was brought over for historical purposes 
So some of the answers in here will show a subtraction of three months because you, you will see Councillor Reiser asking, for instance, let's just take an example. Question four or five. Question four. Uh, Linda, judge Linda Bayloof has been paid $3,000 a month since she became judge, which would multiply out to $36,000 a year, but she was paid $45,000. Why? And the answer is because the vendor list that we provided the audit committee actually had three more months of historical information. So if you back that out, right. you'll see how we answered those questions. That makes sense, and thank you. I Yes. That wasn't mentioned at the, the meeting or I probably would have Correct. not answered those or asked those questions. So thank, thank you for being so thorough I, on this. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, so this, I hope, can bring a little bit of closure to the 2016-17 because what we also mentioned to you at that last meeting is that uh, that former staff person, accounting manager, also helped us with our biennium budget, and it's the first one that we did. And we are currently nine months into that, and that we were very open and honest that we have some concerns with that budget as well. And we'd like to, to walk you through what those concerns are so that the public can also hear those concerns but then understand how, how we would like to address them so that we are not having the same issue next time. So. Um, Everyone, Kathy Brucker, thank you for being here, and I'll hand it over to you. What I'd like to address tonight is some of the specific areas of concern that we're dealing with, the 20, with the, on the 2017-19 biennium budget, how it's currently appropriated, and how we would like to restructure it for the balance of the biennium. It's currently set up in a format called object classification that basically... Oh, is that Object classification. object classification. This okay. all stems back to Oregon budget law. Okay. Um, the uh, First off, you have your fund classifications, general, water, sewer, etc. Then it goes into the object classifications of personnel services, materials and services, capital outlay, debt service, interfund transfers, and special payments. This creates a very restrictive budget that does not allow management of a department in an efficient, cost-effective manner. For example, within the general fund, every department is interdependent on the other to not exceed any of the object classifications and is not able to count on full utilization of their bottom line appropriations. After discussion with the Department of Revenue last Friday, <coughs> I uh, we were able to determine that we can restructure the budget into an organizational unit slash program method that would include the general fund, each department with personnel, m and and capital outlay included and rolled up, followed by operating transfers, debt service, contingency and special payments, and unappropriated ending fund balance. All other funds would have the operator operating expenditures for the fund at one level, followed again by operating transfers, debt service, contingency, and special payments, and an unappropriated ending fund balance. If you went out and looked at um, cities of the same similar size, larger cities, smaller entities, whatever, you would see this is a very, very common budget structure because it is efficient and it allows the city to operate in a very accountable but efficient manner. Kathy? Yeah. I, is that closer to the, val the, the budget structure that we had in the preceding yes. fiscal year? Yes. So, so that's what we had then. But what you uh, had in the preceding fiscal year that caused so many issues is that many of the line items that were listed in there, whether it be operating transfers, whatever, were extremely specific. Uh -huh. okay. And that is where if it said road fund and you put it to general fund, it would cause a So violation. it's part of the same symptom, some of this over-specificity -specific of categories that, that was contributed to some of the issues we had last year and that is still a part of the current budget system but that you'd like to uh, modify in some way so that that aspect of it is not uh, as problematic. Yes. Okay, thank exactly. you. Exactly. So as I was, um, wanted to point out this will allow consistency between the budget and the budget reports that you received this month in your council packet such as, as what you have there and we would be able to tie the budget right back for you very very easily to see if there or to identify any issues or questions you may have. 
This can be accomplished through the use of a supplemental budget because we will be changing the appropriation levels. We do need to utilize this method. Advertising in a public hearing will be required at the meeting with the opportunity for public comment. So it's very transparent, very open. From this, there'll be no increase to any department or fund, simply a restructuring within each fund. We'd like to bring this back to you on June 26th, and then it would cover the rest of the biennium budget, finish out this fiscal year, and cover, as they say, through the end of June 30th, 2019. At the same time, we'll review with you how the fiscal year has progressed, what carry forwards will look like for the following fiscal year, and any areas of concern. We will also detail any other budget adjustments that may be necessary. The only ones we can really envision at this time is if we have uh, grant revenues that we want to add in so that you can recognize the grant revenues and the offsetting appropriations to be able to spend the funds. Between now and then, Jackie and I will be reviewing the budget report very closely and uh, we've already discussed with each of the directors that we will be meeting with them to review their departments and go through them carefully. We'll be discussing the need for accuracy, clarity, and consistency in how expenditures are categorized and paid and discuss any overages, shortages, and how to address them. To give you three examples of some budgetary issues that you may have noticed yourself in the reports that, that we sent out this year, or this month, excuse me. Um, these are three issues that we'll be addressing within city administration. The technology program and the balances still left to pay, including the annual maintenance costs. Appropriation is available in the amount of 218757 to cover those final estimated costs of about 154000 but we also need to ensure that enough appropriation is remaining to co cover other necessary costs through the end of the year. As far so just to take okay. a time out, yeah. that we had mentioned to you in regards to the whole Tyler Technology computer line item in our budget, and it was even one of the overages that we were dealing with at mm -hmm. the audit committee of the 82,000. Mm -hmm. what, what the council approved was correct, but enough, not enough money was put into the budget. Okay. Um, and it's also where our IT support has been coming out of. So what we're saying is that not enough money was put into the budget to cover the contracts that were awarded. And we're, we're being very open with you on that. And, and what this spreadsheet is, you want to walk them through sure. a little bit on that? So basically the, this covers all of the technology project, which if you remember is a three-year uh, project life on there. So basically we've listed out what the budget was for each of the individual projects that was put on there, what has been expended since the uh, budget was originated back in 1516, uh, the estimated costs we still have left, the total, and then the variance to the actual budget that was assigned for each project. As you can see, there are overages on every one of them. Uh, down below, the Tyler issues, which this was the, the biggest one that we had there. The contract was accepted for a total of 236623 but the only amount that was identified in the technology project budget was for 195156 So that put the budget over, I mean, the project over budget right off the bat by $41,000. Then uh, the other problems that we ran into was the um, cost of the uh, uh, software hardware. That was fairly well in line, uh, but the license fees, and license fees came in actually pretty good, but the travel was estimated at 19000 which never did get into the budget, and then uh, came to a total of 38000 there. On-site personnel and remote training came in about 17000 over what the estimated costs were there. Then annual maintenance costs for the software, which is common with any software package, that you have annual maintenance costs usually for a finance package running anywhere from fifteen to 25000 a year. They weren't budgeted for. So they, they forgot have to, to put it in the budget. Right. And there's no yeah. notes or history no. as 
to how these numbers were calculated in the budget. But there was a contract estimate, correct? That's yes, correct. there is a contract estimate. We, you know, and they have to be paid. I mean, so I, I guess my other question is, with the contract estimate, was a contingency built into the contract no. negotiation? No. And so, n so there is ever there's never any contingency throughout this entire project. Right. Not within the Tyler project. Is that project. typical practice, I would ask? No, I think there should have been, and there may have been something in the 234 that the council, 236, that the contract might, yeah, and might it's have a large, accepted. I mean, it's a large enough accepted. contract. It is. Sorry, yeah. I'm, it's a large enough contract. I would expect a contingency, and I also expect that they do quarterlies as you do progressives to be able to look at how this budget is unfolding throughout the project because yes. you can get the red flags popping up early in the yeah. contract. As but they <laughs> aren't looking at it in comparison to the city's budget. Right. right. But I'm just talking about from a project yeah. management yeah. standpoint. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, there were also a lot of addendums that were added to the contract too. Not high dollar, but there were several of them that of course add up. And those were for uh, changes to the software that were not anticipated at the time that they secured the contract. So an addendum not necessarily change order to the major portion of the budget, which would go in front of, most likely go in front of the council, right? Right, for maybe 2000 Okay, so there were small addendums, but not change orders. Right. Wasn't there a big one on payroll where that wasn't anticipated or wasn't figured in the original contract? I'm not missed. aware of that, Mary. I haven't investigated that closely. Okay. Do you I don't yeah. remember if it's yeah. the payroll or not, but, but there, go ahead. I do know there was something dealing with the content manager, which allows you to uh, scan in all documents, things like that. There okay. was something dealing with that, I believe. Okay. So, for example, Councillor Reisner asked at the last meeting, where are we with the email going in-house? Mm -hmm. We did a timeout because if you look at the top there where it says fiber, Tyler email in-house domain controller. We, we put in there 19,000, shows you what we've expended. However, we still need 17,000 to come in and have that done. So we said time out. We need to figure out if we can afford this or not. And I know that you keep wondering why are we waiting is because we are gonna have to go forward with this, but we wanted to be able to do a, um, a detail spreadsheet on this line item to see if we can go ahead and move forward with it. And so Robert is actually getting uh, informal quotes uh, to see if we can get better than the 17000 So a deficit of the budget, 16404 mm -hmm. But we're pe forking out $1,000 plus a month for that service. Where's that coming out from? Well, it, and that's coming out of this uh, line item as well. Yes, the rack space. Yes, yep. the rack space. Right. And that's what we're finding out is that this was just not enough money budgeted for in this line item to handle the IT support, the third year of the software program, the addendums, the training, mm -hmm. all of that. Yes. Yeah. So if, if you look at the bottom there where it says um, under budget there, mm -hmm. but we still have money in the budget to cover for those expenses, and that's what we need to clarify. Yeah, we do have the appropriation in there. Um, it's just uh, these are costs that are going to be incurred. There's really no way around it. We, we know it. We've got to anticipate it and deal with it. Um, the one thing that I had wanted to mention, the bills were being paid. I'm tracking this took quite a while. It was over the three years and the bills were being paid and charged off to three different accounts. So For the same project? Yes. For what yes, lines? For different aspects of it. There were many, many invoices that covered this Tyler pro you know, process over the period of time. So as the invoices came in, they would be charged off to three different places. Very One being hard. computer technology. Um, the sewer fund absorbed part of it, and then another contractual um, line item absorbed part of it. How were the appropriation transfers made? I mean, how does... Weren't that was part okay, of the so, 
So <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to wrap my head around this part of it. Well, and I think that's a good point because yeah. there's a difference between us spending more money than we budget and then not appropriations well, being done. Why don't we do that then, if you don't Go mind? Ahead. Why don't I ask the question, are we 1.1 or 1.2 million in deficit above what was actually budgeted for the general fund and for running the city for this biennium? We are not. Okay, so so that is not that that is false. Anything, anybody that's going out into the community and saying we're 1.2 million dollars over our actual general fund operations budget for the city, is that's not true. Thank you. Thank Se you. Second thing is that the appropriation side of this, you, I don't envy you. I appreciate you, but I mean there are a lot of lines here, and so as we back up and we direct we directly face the non-compliance issues head on I assume that you're going to help us as we message to the community that we are talking about lines we're mm -hmm. literally talking about fungibility funds and lines going to different mm -hmm. budget groups now I am surprised I will say this having spent probably not as much time as a certain citizen that was in the room earlier in, in budgeting I am surprised that that's allowed to happen in, in any structure any public structure and I I know that you weren't at the helm. I appreciate that, Kathy, but by golly, I mean, not being called on that early on is, is pretty surprising to me because Scary. I've gone through these audits before on projects that I've uh, managed, and certainly those are, the, those are the ducks you have in row. Mm -hmm. If you don't, those are the red flags that start popping up left and right. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for explaining that and also for clarifying that we're not $1.2 million over budget. No, but clarification, we did spend $1.2 million in areas where we shouldn't have. Line, Line items. items. Oh, for That's what we're talking about. Um. Right. So, and it was $1.2 million. But it's not over budget. Right. I never, said, I never said it was. Well, somebody did. It's been out in the public, and it, I think actually there is a newspaper article that animates that it is over budget. In fact, no, it, it says line item in my uh, uh, piece. I beg the okay. difference. Well, Thank you, though. It's for right. clarification. It's out there. Well, yeah. so so this was a very um, transparent example mm -hmm. of a line item that we are having difficulty with. We're bringing it to your attention, but it's going to be part of what we're going to be bringing back to you in June, on June and how we move funds around to cover for that. Um, and then you have two mm -hmm. others you wanted to... We just wanted to give you some examples here. Uh, contractual and professional services within city administration also. It's currently over budget by $37,807. And of course, that's to carry us through the full two years. However, with analysis, it's been found that several costs for the civic project have been charged there. And those will be corrected to the proper fund. So they'll be taken out of one and, you know, it, this is an accounting adjustment. Okay. Just like the 130000 with the insurance that was duplicate paid last year. That's an accounting adjustment. It could have been very easily addressed and fixed. Okay. Um, the appropriation will need to be added here to contractual and professional services. Um, an example of is for what you're paying me because I'm a contract um, staff. I am not an employee. So I'm going to be paid by the offset of the wages from the accounting manager. So that will have to be moved from personnel services down to materials and services <coughs> so that you can cover uh, the cost for me. That's an example of what we'll have to do. The fire and liability insurance, getting back to that uh, duplicate payment made last year, we have an appropriation, just the appropriation, it's not meaning that we're going to spend it, but we have the authority sitting there for 135000 that will not be utilized because of the payment from last year. This appropriation can be transferred to another line item within city administration based on need or to another department or fund with a budget transfer resolution that would come up before you. Okay. That would leave enough to cover next year's payment still for insurance, but it could assist with, it, with any unanticipated expenditure in some other category. I, I can't emphasize enough, w Jackie and I have a lot of work to accomplish in a short amount of time to try and pull this together by the end of this fiscal year, and it must be addressed by the end of the fiscal year for the closing process. Because remember, we may have a biennium budget, but we still have a, a, you know, a fiscal year every single year. 
Within six weeks, we'll be back with a comprehensive look at how the year has transpired and a refreshed plan for the completion of the biennium. I'd be happy to answer any questions. One of the areas uh, that was mentioned in the audit of the uh, fiscal year ending in 2017 had to do with uh, state uh, revenue sharing funds. Mm -hmm. right. um, uh, that one kind of surprised me that, that we get dinged for something where it, it came as a result of getting more money yeah. than we had expected to get. So I want to share a little bit with the public. If I, if I misspeak about this, you can correct me. But uh, the state of Oregon collects funds from a variety of things, cigarette taxes, gasoline taxes, and cities which uh, provide a certain designated services are eligible to share in those funds. Um, and uh, you'll see in a, in a couple of months we will have to pass a resolution here in the council as we do every year that says, yes, we provide these services, therefore we qualify for those funds. And once you qualify, you get your share from the state. And we developed a budget for the fiscal year ending 2017 where we estimated what that amount was going to be and projected that we would transfer that amount of funds into the general fund for use in providing those services. That's what states do, uh, cities do. Well, it turned out we got more money from the state than we had expected to get. But we didn't make an adjustment in the budget to allow us to transfer a larger amount from that fund into our general fund. And in doing so, even though we, in essence, were paying ourselves money that we were entitled to, it counted as um, uh, an, an, an exceeding the budgeted amount. Right. So um, some of these things are a little counterintuitive to the way you would do budgeting at home, which is why I used kind of a home budgeting example. Uh, it's, some of you are probably old enough, no, I don't think anyone here is old enough to remember a concept called a, a Christmas club that families used to have, banks used to have in the old days where people could put aside money every month through the bank in a, in a non-interest, non-fee account so that when Christmas came around, you know, if you put aside $100 every month, in the old days it would have been $10, but uh, $100 every month when it came to Christmas, you'd have $1,200 to spend on Christmas presents. Uh, and it's like you were doing that and you planned your family budget to put aside $100 and then at Thanksgiving a generous employer says, here's a $300 bonus. And you say, wow, I'll put this in my Christmas club account. Well, from a family standpoint, that's all good. You got $300 more than you wanted. You had $1,500 to spend at Christmas instead of $1,200. You would see that as a very positive thing. Okay. From the state budget compliance rules though, if that happened at the city level, you're wrong because instead of transferring $1,200 into that account, you had tried, transferred $1,500 into the account and you went over your budget and that's a mistake. So some of these things that, uh, that we were kind of dinged for and I want to take them seriously. I think it's important for us to be prudent and diligent in all that we do and to apply and, and be compliant with these rules. Uh, they don't mean that we were necessarily overspending, and certainly not on the total budget level we did not overspend at all. In fact, we underspent by $1.4 million in our general fund. Uh, but this, uh, this resolution that we passed in June that helped us change some of those appropriations so that money that we could tell was not going to be spent out of one account could be transferred to a different budget account and appropriated there and expenditures from that account would be appropriate. Um, we did that resolution, resolution a little earlier than we've done it in past years. We did it early in the month instead of in, most, uh, in many years we've done it one or two days before the end of the fiscal year so you had a better idea of exactly what those expenses were going to be. Uh, and it also came just a few days after two city councilors and a city administrator left their positions and, and I don't want to say that that necessarily had anything to do with it, but it was a time when uh, things may not have been given the, the degree of attention that they, that they might have otherwise. Okay. Uh, I don't want to be making excuses, but uh, it, I, I thought w an appropriate use of your time would have been to draft a, uh, a resolution which had we adopted a resolution then knowing what we know now about where, the, where those, what had been expended, 
we would not have had this issue at all. And it certainly would have been possible to do so. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, one thing I'm uncomfortable with is uh, hearing people talk about this uh, at public media, uh, I mean, uh, in the media, the uh, newspaper and uh, on social media, who uh, maybe only have a rudimentary understanding of, of government budgeting. Um, but one thing that bothers me is hearing the statement that um, certain programs in the city were raided in order to uh, accomplish uh, our budget reappropriations. Um, as I understand, um, we went to different we uh, departments and, okay, bit. all right. <laughs> we went to departments and with the knowledge and cooperation of the department heads, we reappropriated funds that we knew three weeks before the end of the fiscal year were not going to be spent. There was a $35,000 item for a library uh, employee level two uh, and no one Mike, is going Mike, to no, I'm going to go for process. M Mayor, we're I'd like to make a motion. Get off. We're I'd like to make right. a motion. Please. I, I move that uh, Councilor Milch is allowed to go ahead and, and give us the details. I, I right. feel like it's important. I'm, I'm looking for a second. I'll second that. Thank you. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Well, just as an example, um, there was a library staff position. Three weeks before the end of the, of the fiscal year, that position had not been filled. It was clear that we were not going to pay someone $35,000 for three weeks of work. So that was a, uh, a line item that was appropriately reappropriated to, uh, to provide funding for another category. And there are other examples of that. Um, but um, once you get to the end of fiscal year, if, if a, a line item is not spent, or if it's overspent, you know, it's game over at that point. Everything kind of zeroes out and you start again. We, we didn't have to transfer money from somewhere else to cover the areas where we went over because you start again in a new fiscal year. Um, I, I just, I get uncomfortable sometimes with misinformation that gets spread. And, uh, and I'd like us to, to try to seek out better answers to questions. And I, so I really appreciate that you're coming to us with this to give us some very specific examples and to help us avoid the mistake that, was, that we made. And, and uh, we acknowledged last time, human beings make mistakes. And, and a person with maybe that didn't have quite enough experience into this job, uh, it, it was more likely that a mistake like this would be made. Um, but I'm glad we're addressing it. And I appreciate uh, the experience that you're bringing to us, Kathy, in, uh, in helping us get over this. And I appreciate your candor. Uh, Administrator Betts in uh, acknowledging this and uh, emphasizing your concern about it. Thank you. That's all I'll say. <laughs> Here, I have one question I'd like to ask Administrator mm -hmm. Betts, yeah. if I may. So, um, as we go forward at some point in time, and th thank you, Kathy, for your work on this, <clears throat> we're going to be, uh, I believe, probably looking for somebody in a permanent position, uh, permanent replacement for our previous financial director. My question is, what was the hiring process prior to for the, for the previous financial director? How did we go through a recruitment process? Um, well, first, to answer your question, yes, One, thank but you. I'm not in a hurry. I, I think the city needs some stability. And I say that also from an internal perspective. You know we have a, um, a human resources coordinator manager that's assisting us as well. And we have some um, some big projects that we're working on and I think uh, stability is the word that I am using for the next couple of years. I'm not saying that's how long Kathy will stay on but at least for at least the next 12 months to help us get through our budgeting uh, cycle she's going to be helping us out and I, I think I told you she's not here full time. She's a contract here Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So she's also going to help assess what does Gladstone need because an accounting manager position was not the qualifications that we needed at that time. So it may be a finance director at um, not a full-time level. So, so we will assess that while Kathy's here. You know, I can speak a little bit to what happened before I got here. I'll defer to Councilor Weisner because I believe there was an interim <coughs> city administrator at that time that when the position was created and they did a recruitment and I know Councilor Reisner you were involved in that correct? Correct. Okay. So 
uh, applications went out. It was done in internally. Uh, I don't know exactly how many uh, applications were uh, received, but I believe about uh, six uh, applicants were interviewed by uh, Ross Schultz was the interim, and I believe the uh, assistant city administrator at the time was uh, Jolene Morshida. And then from those interviews, the uh, two were uh, selected to interview with Ross Schultz and myself. And then we, out of the two, picked um, Carolyn Gray. So there was a process in place, and, and we'll continue to have a process in place as we go through assessing. We're going to do the same for the human resources position as well, but yes, we will do a, a process. I, I mean, we're embarking on a 12 or $10 million plus dollar civic <coughs> civic building, which is a pretty big capital project. And um, this technology project, the way that these funds <laughs> appropriations have taken, you know, have been made, we've got to steer really clear of this process here. I mean, this won't work. Construction's big with lots of changes. And I think your intention is to do, what, quarterly recap? Yep. And I think uh, we gave you a glimpse of what, like we said, was going to go in the monthly report. We're reviewing with department heads. Um, we can click on line items now if you want more detail, but I, I think really you're getting more detail than most municipalities do, and Gladstone needs that right sure. now. Yeah. And my um, management team is supportive of that, but, but I trust them. I back them. And we're all in this together and want to keep moving forward, but yes, we will have quarterly check-ins with the City Council, and any time you want to have sit-downs with myself or Kathy, you're welcome to do that. And I would assume that with a capital project of that magnitude, we're going to be segregating and separating much of what's happening with that project so that we can also check in, yeah. potentially do progress reports with you on those and change orders and addendums. Yeah, construction's always a surprise. All right. Yeah. Thank you. You bet. All right. No. So, and thank you. This new report is awesome. Looks great. It is very informative. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. So that wraps up our regular agenda. So the next, is there anything brought up during business from the audience that we would like to discuss or direct staff to take action on? There was quite a few people that came up. Frank, Les, Greg, Bill, Janice, and Patrick. So let me see here. Um, I I know um, we told Janice we wouldn't be very long tonight, I'm sorry, and thanks. I almost told you that I hope we are because we really wanted to talk through this tonight. Um, and I apologize because I'm not sure, but there was another woman that that presented here last time in regards to this request. Brenda, 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 and I think you had left early that evening. Um, so if I can just maybe follow up with Janice and Brenda to give them the information. Then, then I'm happy to do that. We had talked about trying to get them some county connection resource information, um, also being able to maybe help them do fundraisers um, sporadically here if they wanted to put a barrel for a month at City Hall. Or we had talked about a place collections. where that they could could do collections. Um, and I'll, I'll I'll defer to our city <laughs> recorder because I think you had done a little bit of follow up with. Um, Code Enforcement Boyle in regards to does the county have services or do we pay for services, animal shelter services? I will have to get back to you on that one. Okay. But no, we'll take that on and, and work with her then. Okay. So you guys one. will just go direct? Yes. Okay. We were also, I think, didn't we discuss sponsorships at the last one or two meetings about the possibility of... Well, we have that, um, them that business directions. and community development promotions committee that we're establishing, and we're going to put together criteria this next year for organizations that want to ask the city for money so that we are doing a formalized process. So that's still going to take probably six months to put together, but that's another avenue that once that's up and, and ready that, that they would be able to apply for funds for. Okay. for your shelter services if you needed funding. That was one of the things that they had, Brenda had asked about last time. 
Well, what we just really want is there's no Clackamas, there's no shelter in Clackamas County for cats. There is for dogs. We've been doing the cat rescue for, well, I've been doing it since 2008 for Clackamas County, but our group formed last year. So there is a big need for a shelter or a building. And we have everything we need now to go in that building. We just need building. So <coughs> every time we've come, we've been told, well, we're going to check on that. We're going to check on that. But we've not had a straight answer yet. No, I, I think at the last council meeting, we made some good progress. And that's why I need to have a side conversation with you. Yeah, we don't have extra buildings laying around that we can donate to something like this. It's We have a budget that we have to live within and that wasn't in the budget but we're going to try and see if we have other avenues to help you out okay so how will you contact them you said on the side which can you email me or something yes i if that's what you would prefer <coughs> i have your email and i have your phone number so which do you prefer you can email me that's fine okay all right anything else I believe, actually, I believe the last question prior to this discussion was whether or not any of us wanted to respond to business from the audience. Yes, if we would like to discuss or direct staff to take action. I would like to just make one more generalized comment. Um, I've been trying, I sent you guys out a doodle today. I don't know if you responded to it because we're going to try to have a council training session. Um, and, I, and I know that there's there's been a lot of citizen requests about what's the council's process looking into complaints do we need to change it and I think that just holistically if that's something that the council wants to look at on how you address complaints that that would be something that we're trying to accomplish at this council training day um, so I would just offer that as as one possible remedy that that we could collectively say that we at least want to look at it and acknowledge it and the city attorney is willing for us to look at that process if that's something that the majority of you would like to do because we don't have a process in place now the process we have in place is the in the city council rules and it's the process that frustrates the citizens the most remaining silent really means many different things but um, you you're not required to send an email you're not required to do anything that's your prerogative as an elected official and so if we want to change that on how we process and investigate complaints and amend the city council rules then I would suggest that's a topic that we could have during our council training day any discussion did you send that out today this afternoon the doodle link yes okay so once we all agree on a day to meet, then we can start putting that together. I, I think the process is broken right now, to be blunt. Um, you know, we, we have listened to citizens' complaints. Um, Councillor McMahon says that he's, after the third time, he's not <laughs> hearing exactly what they're saying. And frankly, I, I've listened every single time. I, I have issues with regard to credibility of, about Mr. Osborne. I, I, you know, accusing uh, Councillor Niece of something that he himself may be in violation of. I don't have trust, to be very blunt, uh, on this council. I don't feel trust. I feel like we are um, fighting each other. Uh, I feel like we have surrogates out in the community who are spreading misinformation. I mean, I'm going to be very blunt about this. This is not the way that a functioning council moves forward. And I am a citizen, just as everybody else is in this city, I'm concerned about a $12 million capital project with a council that's as fractured as it is tonight. It's fractured. And we're not working together. In September at the retreat, we, we discussed it, we talked about it, we had action items, we were going to go forward and work together. And as soon as we got out of the retreat, not more than a month passes and the attacks start happening. And it's on social media and it's innuendo and somebody's complicit with this or this is being implied or what have you. We have, we have a lot of lift here. We also are going to our voters and our citizens and asking them to, to vote on these ballot measures for the library. 
there are folks that are out here that aren't in this room that most likely won't because they're seeing this. They're seeing, you know, they're seeing three years of, of newspaper articles that are not very favorable to this city. I'm concerned. And so what I'm doing now is voicing my concern. As to the business from the audience, it's deliberation. I need to look at a lot of things before we make take actions. And I'm not even sure that what what's being driven here, that censorship is going to be the action that you gentlemen want, frankly. You've got a recall process in play. Why don't you just continue your recall process and let us conduct the business? And that's not happening. So, point being, I don't feel trust here. I don't feel like we're, I, th I feel like we're fractured. I feel like we've got to do something. We've got to get in a room. Open it up to the public. Let's talk it out. We got to do something. And I'm at a loss for words right at the moment because I'm pretty surprised. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised we keep going down this path. This is like being on a wagon speeding down a hill and all seven us, of us are on the wagon and nobody's grabbing for the brake. That's, my, that's just my feelings about how we're conducting business. Lately. So a doodle poll's been out. Are we going to meet? We should. We need to meet, but all of us need to respond so that we can come up with a date ASAP where we can all get together. I agree. Instead of no response. Everybody needs to respond and come up with a couple dates. And I think it needs to be in the next couple weeks. I think it's critical. Saturday. Saturday. It's, we're not there yet, but we're going to say something. <laughs> <laughs> so could everyone please look at the doodle poll and respond? I've responded. I, mm. I've been in Southern Oregon. I drove up for this meeting, so I will look at it as soon as I get Well, I'd like to mm -hmm. ask the council, is, is, it, is everybody comfortable going forward? Are we, are we all... We need to get together. That's fine. Absolutely. And it's not and it's not the get together. I think the problem is is I have to agree. Uh, there's some huge projects that we'd like to do, but we can't seem to get out of recalling a person or two or or five uh, or five, uh, and so that's going to hold everything up. So I guess the question is, are we going to just leave this alone? Let us move forward. The the whole accounting thing was was way overblown. Um, taken way out of context. It's the budget is weird, yes, but it's because it has to balance, and it has to balance. So you take a little bit out of the. It's like the, the our budget is so dense right now because there's a line item for paper and a line item for computer supplies, which should be the same line item of just general supplies, so that when they overrun the paper, instead of having to do a budget. Uh, amendment and takes a little bit of money out of the computers, it's just done that way. It's just asinine that we're spending this much time. We're just spinning our wheels. We're not going where I want us to go, which is getting that public building built for, I, for me, it's for the employees, number one, because they're the ones that are going to be here when it collapses, and then for the citizens, and then also to move forward on this library. This is going to, we've got a, at least on the public buildings we have to go ahead we're, we're moving forward on that we don't have to go to any more votes we've got this vote coming up in a month that if if all the social media stuff just keeps swirling and swirling and we're stealing money and we're misappropriating money and on and on it's that that library is not going to pass people are just going to look at that and say nope and so be it we will still get that public buildings built so i'm frustrated as well Okay. I support Councillor Tracy's initial comments. I support Councillor McMahon's comments. I support Councillor Mills's comments that he mentioned earlier regarding the the audit procedure. Uh, and I believe in this training session to in fact fix things and get uh, cards on the table. I thought our last one went well. I just wish well, that would have stuck. But I, I mean, but we've got a councilor, sitting councilor, Councilor Reisner, going to the paper and calling for the resignation of a sitting councilor, Councilor Nice. I didn't ask for that. I think that maybe I go. She should 
Well, you said down. that specifically. I mean, no, <laughs> it's the headline. I, I don't know what to tell you. Well, I didn't do the head. I didn't do the headline. We have a reality, but you're going to tell me there's another reality. I, I'm having a problem with that. I, that's the headline in the paper, Neil. And well, you, and I, I don't write the headline. That's uh, well, editor uh, Rindelman does that. But you were you, quoted in the paper, right, saying that uh, Councilman Nee should step down as president, and from the the business liaisons till this matter can be resolved. You guys keep saying, talking about not wanting to rehash. Why don't we have it looked into to see what the answer is? The answer. Get it reason. I'm sorry. The answer to what? So to their complaints. Why don't we have it looked? You know. I I am not. I don't object to that. What I he keep hearing is the council should investigate. The council should right, investigate. Okay. So I <coughs> went over a four-page lawyer writ. Uh, Sherry Hall, uh, county clerk, hired an attorney. They did they did a look, a, you know, a deep dive into this, or as deep a dive as they could. That was sent on to the secretary of state by uh, by um, recorder Ackerman or who, who, whoever she is at the county. We it's been investigated. So. The question is not w w should we investigate. It's been investigated. That's only one complaint, Matt. It's been yeah. multiple. There's been multiple issues here, and you guys keep punting. No, we, we don't keep punting, Patrick. We're trying to get these buildings built, and we're trying to get something done. Yeah. And, I, and I'm sorry. It's not. Uh, I mean, I would gladly speak with you offline. You, you I want to stick to process. We could do that. That would I be great. I haven't talked to you at all. I know you haven't, but you keep, keep okay. saying you will. You're welcome to come and speak to me. I'm not right, going to do it on so next we'll door. we'll take that as a separate uh, I just think we're fractured okay well then we have this mm -hmm. path forward everybody respond to your doodle poll and let's get together and let's talk all right Sounds that's all we can me. do okay started place uh, some of these folks are campaigning for you I whatever you want to do mayor if you can Control some of your surrogates. Could, could I say something? <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. 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 no, we're no. we're we're done with this conversation. So. Yes. All right. So the next item is business from the council. Councilor Mercero. Uh, I would thank like to thank uh, our city administrator Jackie and Kathy uh, Brooker. Hope I pronounced her name right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, for heading the uh, audit question and doing some super start work to, to the issue, and I think it was very well presented. Thank you. You're welcome. That's it for me. Councillor McMahon. Uh, nothing at this time. Councillor Reisner. Uh, just remind everybody tomorrow night, 5:30, town hall meeting for the library at the senior center. So please come down and uh, support the library. Councillor Tracy? I think I'm good. Councillor Neese? Nothing. Councillor Melch? Uh, I had a good meeting with Bob Stewart, the superintendent of the Gladstone Schools. Um, there's a concern right now in the community about the ongoing uh, um, funding status of the Gladstone Food Pantry, which uh, works out of the uh, Gladstone High School. There's a building on the campus there, and they serve food to, um, over the last three months, uh, I think the number was 852 uh, unique individuals. Uh, some of them come regularly every week. Some of them come just, you know, occasionally. Um, and staffing that program uh, is, is one of the difficulties they have right now. A lot of the food itself is provided by the Oregon Food Bank uh, and other sources. And uh, this is another one of those community programs which we might be looking at in terms of uh, business fees and other things as something that would uh, uh, improve the situation in our community to make sure that uh, in a state where a lot of people uh, go hungry in spite of all the things that are grown and uh, uh, foods and that are produced here, uh, there is still a great deal of poverty and a great deal of uh, people who, who don't get enough to eat and it affects our school systems, it affects uh, our local economy, and uh, it's something that we will be addressing when we get to have our joint meeting with the school board and the city council uh, in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Um, the only thing I have is I went to the Parks and Rec meeting last night, and one of the new 
things that they're looking at is something called a fitness court, which is a company that comes in and builds these amazing small, I think they're 32 by 32 foot courts that pretty much hit every fitness level you could imagine and then some. Um, there's grants available, they want to do a partnership, so they're going to look at the possibilities of integrating that into one of our small pocket parks maybe. Um, and then the Arbor Day event is April 28th up at the Gladstone Nature Park from 10 to 1. So everybody should go. It's going to be awesome. Um, and that's all that I have. Oh, and I think he mentioned the town hall. The town hall mm -hmm. tomorrow. Got right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The town hall is tomorrow. 530 to 630 at the Senior, senior Center on the library. Mm -hmm. Move all right. to adjourn. Would somebody like to make a motion? I'll second it. Oh, motion was made by Councillor Reisner, seconded by Councillor McMahon. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Meeting adjourned at 8.01 p.m.